And at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, someone who doesn't need it in this room, but a former rehearsal director for Martha Graham and the artistic director of Dance Kaleidoscope, David Hochoy. Please. Thank you, James. Everybody can hear me, right? Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Conversations. And thank you so much for braving the snow um, and the weather to come out this evening to this very interesting uh, chance to get to meet the dancers and to hear their points of view. I, I always think it's really wonderful to, to um, you know, it's really interesting to look uh, on the stage and you, the dance is uh, the language of the body and um, dancers don't usually speak. There was a time in um, recently when it was the fashion for dancers to speak and dance at the same time, but I think that's going out of fashion now. Um, so, but we speak with our bodies. So really, it's really a wonderful time, a uh, chance to, to get to know the dancers individually a little bit and to, uh, to find out a little bit about their lives. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce you all uh, to Janet Alber. She is the artistic director of the Martha Graham Dance Company. And Janet, welcome to Indianapolis. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm, so, I'm sorry for all of the snow. And um, actually, um, I think uh, the last time they were in this neck of the woods, they were performing at Purdue. And um, the snowstorm was so bad, they had to take a bus all the way here from New York City. Right? Jimmy, Jimmy, can we get an, um, a mic for Janet, please? How about, how about this one? How about oh, this thanks, one? Thanks, Janie. And um, we couldn't take off. You guys, it was sunny and fine here, so we got on a bus for 17 hours. But So we feel lucky that we're, we're here this time. So actually, Janet, while we're waiting, um, why don't you, t since they have been looking a little bit at, Clyde, at the rehearsal of Clytemestra, tell us a little bit about what is Clytemestra? <laughs> Clytemestra, well, for starters, Martha took the whole trilogy, um, the Oresteia, and decided to, to uh, offer it from Clytemestra's point of view. Uh, Clytemestra is Agamemnon's wife, and um, it, 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 she's one of the most reviled character in classical literature because she murders the king, she murders Agamemnon. And Clytemestra, uh, Martha Graham, uh, turns Clytemestra into the protagonist. And we, uh, when the curtain opens, she's in the underworld and she's in conversation with Hades asking why she is dishonored among the dead when so many other people behaved so badly. Um, so that's the, you know, the twisted contemporary way Martha came at this story. Um, you were just looking at one of my favorite sections because it involves that huge red cloth, which is much more difficult to wrangle than you can imagine. Well, you've seen, it's very difficult to wrangle. I was a red cloth lady. Susan McGuire was a red cloth lady. We have a history with this damn cloth. <laughs> but it starts as Clytemestra's cape when she comes in, and then she stretches it out as a red carpet to wel welcome Agamemnon back to the city after the 10 years of the Trojan War. And he brags about his self at the Trojan War, introduces his mistress, Cassandra, um, and Clytemestra has laid this trap for him, and she keeps telling him, you should step on this red cloth to walk into the palace. And he keeps saying, no, no, it's reserved for the gods. It's reserved for the gods. And she's saying, tell me more about your hero heroics. And he does, and she said, but you are like a god. Please, you really should step on this cloth. Of course, the moment he does, he's doomed. The figure of Hades follows him back up into the palace. And the red cloth becomes like an eye that opens and you'll see the murder. It's very cinematic of Agamemnon. It closes again, it opens, and he gets stabbed again. Then Cassandra gets back there and she, she's done in. And then the bodies exit on the cart and the red cloth becomes a pool of blood as they're dragged off the stage. So it's just an incredible prop and use of fabric. Right, and I'd love to tell, um a funny story, if you don't mind, about the red cloth. Once we were performing in 
um, an outdoor theater in France in this place called Avignon, which is a very beautiful place um, in the south of France. Um, it's actually where the Palais du Pape is. I wouldn't give you the, I won't give you the whole history of it. Anyway, it just happened to be a very, very windy day. Um, and so the girls were being blown away by the wind on the red cloth. And so we had to, extra people had to get out there and sit down on it so that it wouldn't blow away. It was just crazy. Here's Ben. Do you want to yes. throw any questions? And his Ben is playing Hades in Clytemestra, the king of the underworld. So he's in argument when the when the show, when the play opens, when the dance opens. This is the guy who is arguing with Clytemestra. Hi, Ben. Hi. Um, <laughs> that's okay. Um, ben, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Tell us, uh, are, are, are you the only dancer that's coming? Uh, there are more coming out? I, I think there are. I just okay, so, so all right, that's okay. Just, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, how did you uh, end up here in the Martha Graham Company? You know, the, thing that the, the interesting thing about all of the dancers who come to the Graham Company is that everybody has a different road. Everybody is attracted to the Graham Company. Uh, technique in a different way and so if you could tell us sure. what happened with you um, that would be great. I started dancing and I think it was 15 I was wanting to do musical theater and the um, school I was originally taking my first classes at had a lot of modern classes and there was a gram class and I, I loved it immediately. Um, I learned later it was more based on Robert Cohen's version of modern but that's beside the point. Um, then I went to college and I still wanted to study theater and voice, so I found um, Indiana University and I was able to triple major, but their dance program was strictly ballet. So I figured, oh, well, why not? Um, did that and then somewhere in my late 20s, I just kind of wanted to get out of the dance world entirely, so I stopped dancing for about seven years. Then I was back in Colorado where I'm from and some old teachers of mine were going to stop teaching and wanted me to take over their classes. So I started training again so I can demonstrate and met another Graham teacher and thought, oh, I always really like this. Why not take classes again and learn it? She ended up kind of mentoring me for about two or three years and teaching me privates and stuff like that. Um, and then I was looking to move to, well, long story short, um, started thinking about moving to New York and maybe try to have an actual dance career in New York. And I took a few workshops and met Lloyd Knight, who's doing the Messenger of Death, at one of these workshops. And he said, Janet, we we'll love you. You really need to audition. So I dropped off a headshot. And she said, well, we just hired all our men. But will you come back in March? So I did. And they hired me. And that was five years ago. Great. We, let's pass the microphone down. So, dancers, we are, we're telling everyone what our names are and where we're from and how we got into to the Graham <laughs> um, Vortex. Oh, hello. All right. My name is Maurizio Narvi. I'm from a small town in Italy between Florence and Siena. Um, I came to the Graham School with a scholarship in 1998. I start studying dance uh, abroad in Italy from one of the alumna of the school. Um, I don't know, at the beginning I was a little skeptical about the contraction, release, and lots of shapes, and I was like, nah, I don't know. And then something that you got me and that took me to New York and to the second company and to, and to here. I've got one. <laughs> Right. Um, my name is Lloyd Mayer. I was born in Geneva, Switzerland. And this, the story of me coming to Graham and getting into, in, into the work and uh, dance with everyone here, I, I trained in England. So I was born in Switzerland, but I trained in England. I did my formal dance training in England, in London, at the, at the Rambert School of Ballet and Contemporary Dance in Richmond. Prior to that, I was finishing my academics on the Isle of Man, a tiny island between Ireland and Great Britain. So I was there finishing my academics. I was about thir 13, 14. And then at that time, I really wanted to be an actor. I was determined to become an actor and I wanted to go to you know, audition for the great schools in London and RADA and so on. As I started 
you know, getting back into dancing, because as a child, as a young boy, I did improvisation and hip-hop and so on. But as I started to kind of get into ballet again, improvisation, contemporary, modern dance, not yet, because it's not really strict modern dance, is it really taught in, in England, maybe apart from Laba notation and all that stuff. Anyhow, my, my dancer, my ballet dancer, highly encouraged me just to get some knowledge in the, uh, of, of dance to research masters of the, of the 20th century, masters of modern dance of the 20th century. And it wasn't just Martha Graham that I really sort of thoroughly researched and got into the work. It was especially uh, people like Marie Wigman and uh, Rudolf Laban and the people from Europe and also Hanya Holm and Martha Graham. And I went to, uh, Martha Graham was the woman that I researched first, that I, went, that I went into first, and I absolutely fell in love with the work. My first, the first ballet that I ever saw was the actual recording, a very famous recording where Martha Graham actually dances Jocasta in Night Journey with Paul Taylor and Bertram Ross, I believe. And, uh, and I absolutely fell in love with the work, the concept, the, just it was so uh, raw and so different from anything else. It had nothing to do, you know, like many people say, with decoration and um, it just moving from the extremities of the body. There was an absolute center and core to the work in every single thing that I saw that Martha Graham made. And I thought, you know, this is it. I really, I really have to get into the work. I really want to feel what it feels like to dance these magnificent pieces. Then went on to the summer intensive, and that's how m most of us, I think, get caught up in the work, because you go to these beautiful summer intensive. Denise Vale, the rehearsal director of the company, was my first Graham teacher. She gave me a the first glimpse of what the contraction, the release was about, what the, the idea, what of the technique was in the architecture and did more of the summer intensives and then finally just went into the into the school and the company and here I am so it was really wonderful it does right uh, uh, 20 years old yeah <laughs> and usually after him I say that I'm 15 so I'm very <laughs> uh, my name is Masha Dashkina Maddox I'm from Kiev Ukraine born and raised and my training started out very pure ballet vaganova technique and I wasn't introduced uh, to modern technique until I came to America in 98. And that's where I started learning Graham and Lamone in high school and in college at New World School of the Arts. And um, Graham was definitely an, an acquired taste, as I say. <laughs> it took me a while to understand and appreciate the movement of the spine because it's, it's just so different. Um, and after I graduated from college, there was an audition. I flew up to New York, had a gruesome three-day audition process. I made it through, <laughs> and uh, here I am. That's it. Hi, my name's also Lloyd, Lloyd Knight. Um, I'm originally from England, and I grew up in Miami, Florida, and I went to school with Masha at New World School of the Arts. And we trained in everything ballet, jazz, modern. Um, but Graham really, I, I really got hooked on Graham. So I just went with that. <laughs> and I auditioned senior year of college and I got into the company. And this is my eighth season. And I'm a soloist. Tadej Burnik, um, I come from Slovenia. And um, my journey was kind of um, a journey of a, a, a a boy that was grew up in a small town, in a small country. Uh, so I didn't have a, a training that had a signature. It was just modern training. Um, until I went to the uh, Benetton Danza competition um, and uh, I was one of the winners. And the award was to choose one of the three schools. And it was Graham, Ailey and Bejar Studio in Lausanne. And the director of Graham uh, School uh, came to me and she said, you coming with us. <laughs> never seen Graham, never took Graham, but I thought, oh, I really did something to them. So I always say that Graham chose me, uh, but I understand why. So I've been here um, since, and this is my 17th year with the company. Congratulations. Hi, I'm Blakely White McGuire. I am principal dancer with the Martha Graham Dance Company. I've been with the company for 12 years now. And um, the first time I saw Graham, my local presenter in Louisiana brought the student company 
And I remember seeing El Penitente, and it just struck me as something I had never experienced in my life and um, pursued it. And great teachers like David Hochoy uh, and so many other great teachers really kept me hooked through the technique and the passion and the devotion to this body of work. And thank you for having us here. Hi, my name is Natasha Diamond Walker. I'm from Los Angeles. Um, I studied at the Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater for four years with Denise Vale as my first gram teacher. And I fell in love with her. I fell in love with the, um, the dramatic essence within the gram technique, the craziness that you could um, exude while performing the technique. And I performed in Steps in the Street was the first choreography I did for Martha Graham. And I thought it was amazing. The architecture, you know, the very um, well thought out <laughs> construction of the piece I thought was just beautiful. I've been dancing for Graham now for three years. The first two years I was in Italy on a project called Chicondo Picasso. And that was with seven women and this was really my first year being in New York City with Graham, and I love it. Hello, my name is Abdiel Jacobson. Um, I started dancing uh, informally uh, when I was a child. My mom is from Cote d'Ivoire, the West Africa. West Africa. So I started uh, my first training in dance was for my mother, West African traditional dance. And then my first formal training in dance was when I was 15 and I started ballroom dance. So that was like my first formal dance training. And uh, from competitive ballroom and Latin dance, I went to the University of Arts in Philly and that's where I was first exposed to Graham. From Eliza uh, Elizabeth Beauclair, uh, who came and set Helios on our junior class and I was hooked after that. And uh, Elizabeth said, you need to go to the school. And I did that winter and I auditioned that winter, and then the rest is history. And I've been with the company for three years since. Hello, my name is Peju Chen Pot. I'm from Taiwan, Taipei. Uh, I started dancing since I was in middle school for the uh, formal dance training. And um, in, uh, after college, I joined some companies in Taiwan, and then uh, after uh, a year after, I came here and worked with several uh, companies in New York. And I met my husband, who was also a former dancer of Graham. And, um, and I got to travel with him since we have a baby. <laughs> yeah, and I got to see a lot of Graham repertory during the tour. And then I was in love with the old pieces. I was like, oh, maybe I can. Uh, audition for the company, and then we both travel together with the baby. That would be wonderful. And yes, and then I got a job with the company, and I learned a lot from uh, our rehearsal director, Dennis Bell, um, Graham Technique, and that impacted me the most. And still now, I'm still learning a lot from, from everybody, from her as well, and I keep digging deeper, deeper Graham Technique that's never ended. Hi, my name is Tanisha Guy. I'm originally from Trinidad. Um, I started dancing when I came to New York and it kind of happened by chance. I was asked to attend Elliot Feld's public school for dance where I started doing ballet and modern, not modern, but ballet and plank learning and character dance. Um, when I went to high school, LaGuardia High School, I was introduced to Graham. It was my first modern class ever. Um, and I was really captivated by the movements and being able to do something other than ballet. So it was really fun. Um, and then I went to SUNY Purchase where I further trained in Graham. And then I ended up in the Graham Company. And <laughs> it's been a growing and learning experience. And I'm really, really happy to be here. And I hope to grow and learn even more. Hi, my name's Lucy Postel. Um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and I actually have a similar story to Tamisha. We've been together since um, Elliot Fell Ballet Tech. Um, 
uh, doing ballet together in middle school, and then I also went to LaGuardia High School. Um, and all throughout high school, I went to um, the Graham School um, every, well, like three times a week after my regular high school day um, for like three years. And then I would always take the winter intensives and summer intensives for like two or three years. And then um, I went to Mount Holyoke College, um, but then I decided to audition for Gram 2, and I got into Gram 2, and I danced in the ensemble for about um, two years, and then I got the opportunity to dance with the company at the same time. My last year with um, the ensemble, I did both hit at the same time, and then after I graduated from the Gram School, I am just now dancing with the Gram Company. Hi, my name is Xin Ying. I'm from Sichuan, China. And uh, I came to New York in 2010 and studied in Guam School. I was a member of uh, Guam Two, which is a student company. Um, really lucky and uh, getting the company and get dance, Guam drama. Uh, I love it very much. That's it. Hi, my name is Lauren Newman. Um, I've been, been dancing most of my life, but I didn't start learning gram until I went to college at Southern Methodist University. And my first teacher was Larry White, who actually used to teach here, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think if I didn't have Larry as my first teacher, I'm not sure if I would have had the same experience with learning gram and had fallen in love with it so quickly. Um, and then after I graduated, I moved to New York and I danced in Gram 2 with some of these people for a couple years. And this is now my fourth year dancing in their company. Hi, everybody. <laughs> my name's Catherine Crockett. And um, I was raised in California and uh, came to New York when I was about 16, I remember doing a winter intensive with David Ho Choi and not really knowing what the hell I was in for, but loving every moment. Um, I think you're, you, you, you were like, get on the and, get on the and, because I, you know, I wanted to just, uh, yeah, I remember that, get on the and. Um, we always talk about anticipating the movement, getting there before, and I was kind of very languid about it. So that was a uh, memory. Um, but it was the passion, uh, the visceral truth of the movement, the, the technique being, for me, about becoming aware of the instinct of my self and how that propels me into other movement, the movement, um, being on that edge, a very heightened state, um, but a deep place. I feel like I was attracted to Martha's work because of the depth of her characters, particularly her female protagonist characters. Um, I, I was trained in classical ballet, um, and I was, I felt like at that point in my life, as a woman, as a young woman, uh, the literature and the studies that I was learning, I was drawn towards the power of what Martha was also exploring. And in her writings, the authors and her inspirations, Carl Jung, Joseph Campbell, Freud, um, there, were, there was something really deep. And, um, and then the movement itself spoke to me. So I, uh, from that intensive, decided that I was going to move to New York and, um, and study this. And um, then I was invited to join the company. And um, here I am 21 years later. Yes, 21 years. <laughs> and we have one more who just joined. Hi, my name is Lorenzo Pagano, and I'm from Torino, Italy. I started dancing when I was 11 uh, in, my, in a school in my, in my hometown. And I start with Graham, 
actually, when I was 11, before ballet. And at the beginning, I, I was not comfortable and I really hated it. And I remember I was skipping grand classes to do ballet classes because I wanted to be a ballet dancer. And then I graduated from high school and I came to New York to do auditions and I did the audition for the grand school. And I took the winter intensive, three weeks, with such a great teachers. And I remember um, I was taking class with Peggy Lyman, one of the former teacher. Another red blocker. Yeah. <laughs> and I fell in love with the with the school, and I and I and I decided to move here and enroll in the Graham School. And after that, I get in the Graham too in the second company, the school company. And one years later, one year and something, I. I start working with the company, and here I am. Thank you. Thank you, dancers. Um, can you all move down, or we can ask the dancers to move this way a little bit. They're good at moving. Only when we're paid. So um, it's really, it's so nice to have s so many of you all here tonight. Um, and um, we usually I have lots of like itsy bitsy little questions, but I'll, and let me just tell everybody um, in the audience here what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask one more question of the dancers, and then we'll open up the floor if you all have any questions about it. Right? So one of the things that I love to ask dancers is, are you ready, dancers? Um, what is the best thing about your job? And what is the most difficult thing about your job? Okay. Yeah, right. Yes. And um, 200 words or less, Janet says. <laughs> and we're counting. Um, hmm, I would say, well, the worst thing about my job is just the waking up in the morning and everything hurts. Um, and trying to figure out how, that, how you're going to get around that and do another rehearsal day. Um, pills are great. Uh, <laughs> the best thing I think for me is um, even it's actually connected to that when you are in those rehearsal moments or performance moments where you're doing that deep physical work and emotional work and you know you're going to be hurting in the morning um, there's something very satisfying about conquering that and getting through that and um, not just conquering it, but walking away feeling like you left something very special behind, something that could have very much touched somebody and left something um, permanently changed. So, Thank you, Ben. And also, dancers, when you respond, can you please tell us your name again so the, the audience gets to know you a little bit? This is Ben. Ben. What Ben said. <laughs> um, I'm Catherine. It's such uh, an incredible to be able to do what you love and I think that's for me the best thing and there's I keep finding different things that I love about it as I keep doing it um, performing is just such a you know it's, it's a reciprocal thing you get back from the audience what you are giving and it's really a rush and a high and a thrill and it the moment you're stepping into and embracing everything that you're afraid of and letting go and jumping into the unknown and taking that risk and you are rewarded with the moment, the moment that's living right there. You can't plan it, you just have to let it flow through you and the more that you do that, the more you just are alive in the moment. That's the best thing and I think the worst thing is that you can't do it forever. You know, the worst thing about this career is that it, it has a timeline, which is why being in the moment is so beautiful. You make me cry. <laughs> um, well, I would agree with Catherine. For me, that is probably the best part, that when it's almost like a gift when you receive those moments on stage and performance where 
It almost becomes like a meditative experience and you kind of forget who you are or where you are. Um, I'd say that's the best part. And <laughs> the worst part would be probably that um, maybe realizing that there's always, it's not really the worst part, but <laughs> that there's always more that you can do. There's, you know, <laughs> you can go deeper. And I guess realizing that sometimes you're not always meeting your own expectations for yourself. That's Lauren, right? Sorry, Lauren Newman from yeah. Jacksonville, Florida. Mauritius, I'm going to start with the worst one. And uh, unfortunately, I have to share with Kathy and to say that, you know, that's all the beauty, you know, at some point you have to let go and, and change. And, and that's the scary part. What are you going to change to? Um, as a dancer, what you do is who you are and what you are is what you do. So once you stop doing what you're doing, who are you? And that's, that's the scary part. Um, the best part is the privilege of doing Martha's work that doesn't happen to everyone. And I feel very privileged. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's almost all said, really. Uh, the, the, the best part, really, just following what all of the, everyone has just said is, is for me, simply the where you think, gosh, this is, this is why I'm doing this. There's this confirmation is when one performs, I think, is, is this, this, this confirmation where you don't have to wake up in the morning and, and, and kind of get the optimism going and going, oh, come on, you've got, you know, think about three positive things. You have this, you have this, you have that, keep going. But when one performs s such beautiful ballets, you know, this is, this is, I really consider it fine art and I don't know if I'm reaching that fine art, but when I see it, it certainly is. And that is so fulfilling because the work is so vulnerable, the work is so exposed, there's nowhere to hide. And it's difficult because I'm sure it takes you know years and years and years of work to, to, to really, truly expose yourself without any sort of, without hiding anywhere, to truly expose yourself and to show the true vulnerability so that the audience can relate to it, can feel the human heart expressing itself. So I think that is really the, the most beautiful thing. The, the worst thing, I'm still thinking about it, so maybe another day, <laughs> I, I don't quite have it now, I don't. Um, that, that was Lloyd. That was, sorry, and Jan, Lloyd. dancers also, I wanted, to, I wanted to also tell you that the, the, the question I asked was not the worst I asked, I asked you what was your, the hardest part about your job. Oh. Um, so, it, I mean, the, the, uh, that's really, the responses are all correct, but um, you don't have to say what's worst. You do have to say what's hardest. <laughs> well, Masha from Ukraine. Um, two things that I'm gonna say are sort of best and worst and best and worst. So the best and worst is probably the process, the hardest, the hardest. The excuse hardest. me, the hardest. The hardest, <laughs> the hardest um, is the process of um, the, the years that it takes to arrive to, and it, actually you never arrive because the process just never ends. And you realize that through years of just being a human being that there's so much more that you can add to the stage through these roles and it's just a never ending process. And that's the beautiful part of it because it just never dies. That's probably why this work is still on stage and not collecting dust somewhere in a museum. And um, the hardest part is, um, going on tour and leaving family behind. That's hard, because they are your loved ones, and that, you know, it's a sacrifice that one has to make. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Being in the company is amazing, and doing this work is, is I feel very lucky, so for me, the best part of this job is being able to perform this work. The choreography is pure art. The, the sets, the costumes, you're performing art, pure masterpieces. So for me, that's very fulfilling. The hardest part, um, I would say maybe is layoffs. I don't really do good with layoffs. <laughs> Time off, um, I always feel like I have to be doing something I love being in the studio rehearsing this work. 
and other work that we have as well. So for me, being laid off and trying to do other dance gigs isn't so satisfying because once you perform a grand work, nothing else compares to it. So for me, that was the main thing. Um, today, um, one of the best things about um, what we do for me is ability to share art with others, um, traveling and learning from others. Uh, so um, I don't think that I would be a man that I am today if I wouldn't have this kind of opportunity. Um, and the hardest thing is kind of connected to what Masha said, but I will turn it around and say, um, it's easier for us to leave, it's harder for people that we are leaving behind. Mm, for me, the best is uh, this uh, dream come true for me. So uh, I'm living my dream. That's my, that's the best part. Like I'm doing what I love. I started dancing since I was six. So I know I want to be dancer one day. I was a dance teacher in China, and the most of my uh, co-workers before, they already get married, have kids, and uh, I just want to be a dancer and dance on stage, enjoy myself and uh, make audience enjoy my dancing as well. And the worst is how to make this dream better. I think, oh, hardest, hardest. So how to make this dream better? You know, uh, once you use used to this environment, you won't be challenged. So you want something more. You will have a bigger dream. So now I'm chasing another bigger dream. Uh, my name is Ying. Xin Ying is my Chinese name. You can just call me Ying. And my Chinese name is <laughs> Bi Ying. She gave it to me, and I'm Blakely also in the U.S. And the best thing about, um, I have two best things, ha ha, two best things, but really quick. The best thing about this particular job for me is the lineage. I could be a dancer in many, many places, I have. Uh, but the lineage and the hooking in to this thing that is alive beyond me uh, is a best thing. And another best thing about this uh, dancing in this company and this body of work is to be able to um, actualize my potential. I feel like it has given me the opportunity to, um, in many cases, be my best self. The hardest thing is to live in New York City on a dancer's salary. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Amen. Um, I would like to say that the best thing is this sort of ability as a dancer, also as other types of art, to transcend the normalcy of, you know, people that just kind of have a nine to five on a regular basis. They're kind of just in their sort of pattern of life and it occurred to me the other day, we were on stage, I think there were maybe four people that had a stomach flu. And we were on stage and people were like saying, okay, I might have to run off stage and vomit. How am I gonna do that and come back? <laughs> and that was a real thing, you know? It was something real. And to be sitting on stage and knowing that this person might get sick, but you can't tell as an audience member and you can't tell as a dancer, you, you wouldn't know anything at all. And I think that's proof that we, in the work that we do, it's, it's, uh, it's a must to transcend and to kind of elevate and go above and beyond this sort of regular mindset. And so you're very close to like, you know, a higher power and this sort of divine, divining of yourself. I think that's like an amazing thing. It's magical. We're all so magical. I mean, everybody is magical, but we really on a daily basis um, have to deal with that. I have two things that are a challenge. Um, one is when you travel and
and your body's been like this, and then you have to be like this on stage, and that process getting, um, opening yourself up, even if you have to force yourself open, and um, yeah, yeah. The second thing, I don't remember what the second thing was. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, that was, that's okay. yeah, that it is hard to travel and not only leaving behind people that you're used to seeing on a daily basis, but the process of your body, you know, and sitting on a plane and you, you just, you know, you forget how much of how hard that is to deal with. So I'm Natasha from Los Angeles. I'm Abdiel. And, um, for me, it's so funny that this question is being asked because uh, my cousin, whose name is also David, is from Indiana and he lives here and I was with him two days ago and he said to me in the car, he's like, you, you have the best job and you get to travel all over the world and share what you love. And I have to say, I, I completely agree. Like, Tade, I think that is, it's an invaluable experience to go from country, from culture, from race, you know, to meet, to, to allow yourself to open your heart and, to give the audience the opportunity to open their heart, you know, and share in the emotions that we're feeling that we're pouring out and allowing them to also come into that atmosphere, no matter what barrier, there's no barrier, we're all one, you know, we united, we're united in this world of dance, of art, and I think to just travel and open people to that, I think is, it's spiritual, and for me, it's been a spiritual experience um, so that definitely is my best part of dancing in general I would say of being in the Graham company the Graham technique and repertoire forces you to tap into your psychological being and that is something that's rare that's why I left competition dance because I wasn't getting a deep enough experience of the emotions I was feeling that I was going through with my life and I needed something to shout, and Graham technique and repertoire does that to you. It tells you you can't lie. You have to, you have to give yourself. You need to be honest about it. And so that's why I, you know, I, I was so hooked by this. And I think that's the best part of the Graham technique for me, is you really have to be honest with yourself if the audience is going to read it, if you're going to read it. The worst thing. Um, the hardest thing is, I agree with Catherine and Lloyd Knight from England, born in Miami, uh, raised in Miami, um, the, is, you know, taking a break and knowing that this is not going to last forever. But in that same reason, that's what makes it so special. My name is Peju Chen Pot. Everybody call me Pei. Um, I'm going to uh, talk about the hardest and most challenge part is R. Um, left my family behind, and since I have a baby, she's now she's almost four years old, and it caught me towards a lot, a lot, and the longest like three weeks, and um, uh, it's I feel sad. Let's, let's, we can come back to her. Let's come back. Um, Tanisha. Uh, okay. The best part for me is being able to move and to dance, um, to do something that I'm truly passionate about. The hardest for me is, I would say, breaking habits that I've learned or just picked up on my own from previous experiences. I'm just kind of letting those go and bringing in new ways of moving. Yes, <laughs> dance habits, oh. not other habits. <laughs> yes, yes. So that would be the hardest thing for me. <laughs> no other habits. <laughs> so my name is Lorenzo Pagano. Um, I would say the best thing to be uh, of, of my work, of my job, is the fact to be in this company. 
this company is a, is a legacy, is history. And every day to be able to rehearse this piece, perform it, and in some way put something about myself in it that is gonna be part of the history. So in some way, I'm, I'm personally gonna be part of the history with the Marfa Grand Company and with my dancers, and I think this is really the best part. The, the hardest thing for me, I will say, is um, maybe facing frustrations, uh, all of kind of frustration when you get injured or when you, you don't have a performance, a performance that you, you wanted to have. Um, a lot of kind of frustrations and be able to leave the theater, leave the stage or leave rehearsal or whatever it is and be able to drop and leave it there and say tomorrow's gonna be another day, I'm gonna go on stage, I'm gonna go in rehearsal and I'm gonna be a better person, a better dancer, a better performer. Hi, I'm Lucy. Um, for me, I wanted to be in this company, like after the first time I saw it, honestly, when I was young. My mom loved Graham too, so she brought me to see the company all the time. And, you know, nothing spoke to me like this did. I just knew, like, this is what I have to do. I won't, well, I'll never be satisfied until I'm here. And just being in rehearsal or on stage, and, you know, it just all the time I just, like it rushes over me, I'm like, I can't believe that I'm actually here. Like I still can't believe it, and I'm just, I just feel so just amazed at the people I work with. It's just, I feel so lucky just to even like watch them in rehearsal and just, just to feel like I can learn from watching and then try to take that and try to find my own voice. And that kind of leads into what's hardest is for me, I sometimes, it is just like really daunting like to try to live up to the expectations I have. Like for me in this company, it's like, for me it's the best and to be the best, it's, you know, I have to learn to be patient and it takes a while and, you know, you, it's just, you know, it's, it's amazing being here but just to live up to what I want in the future, it's gonna take time. So that's what I need to learn how to do is just to remember that I need to find my own voice and not try to be this person that I've wanted to be, you know, being in this company. So I think I'm done. I'm ready. Okay. okay. Let's talk about the best part. <laughs> yeah. Is I love dancing a lot and I got to dance still. Um, I'm lucky of all my family supporting me, all the top colleagues support me so much. And another bad thing is most of the grand repertory is based on Greek myths, a lot of story, and we got to learn. I got to learn a lot of history with knowledge. At the same time, it's all about the characters, and I feel like I have my own privacy, I create my own world that made me forget about something that, um, um, like a lot of stuff happened in my, in my personal life, my home, and I got to relief, re relief, release them, um, being out of the world. That's, I think, the most ama amazing thing in Graham's world. Thank you, dancers. Thank you for all those comments. That was. Very illuminating. So um, I want to be very respectful of the dancers' time. You know, um, we were all here since 10.30 this morning, so we've had a very long day. So we have about 10 minutes left, and so this is what I'd like to structure the, the rest of the... the um, I would like to leave the floor open for any questions from the audience, and when you ask a question, I'd like one or two of the dancers to respond, but then more... Um, then let's only do one or two of the dancers responding because that gives you a little more chance to ask a question, okay? And would you like to ask one? Uh, work schedule. 
uh, how many hours a day, how many days a week, how many months out of the year, and what do you do when you're not working? And I, and I don't mean what are your hobbies, I mean <laughs> when Graham is not working, what do you do? Uh, take classes or whatever. Um, as far as time, when we are working, uh, rehearsal days are Monday through Friday. We're, um, we're most likely dancing from 10.30 to 6.30 if you can't warm up and all that stuff. That's not every single day. Some days we just come in for a few hours and that's it. When we're on the road, our work days are six days a week. It boils down to an hourly thing, but we've been in the theater since, what, 10.30 this morning. We will be doing this all week. Show days are pretty much the same, so I don't know what that ends up looking like. Um, so I would say that, I mean, yeah, six to eight hours when we're on the road, six days a week. Um, travel days are a work day because planes do destroy your body, and so do buses. Um, when we're not working, it's very individual. Some of us keep incredibly busy dancing. Some of us don't, um, don't want to travel, go have new experiences, bring that back into the dance studio. I would say in general, all of us have some kind of personal physical regimen, whether it's taking different dance classes, going to the gym, Pilates, yoga, um, to keep our bodies up. Um, like I, I, before a big layoff, I always ask Janet what is coming up, and then I kind of know what to physically get ready for. So day one, I'm kind of ready to do those pieces. And so yeah. So there's you. Was you seem to have a remarkable longevity. Um, some of you have been here, now you've been here, Catherine, you've been here 20 years, and I don't remember your name, or 21, I'm sorry, and, pardon me? Yeah, your, your career can legally vote and have a drink. Ben, and you didn't start this till much, till you were in your 30s. I'm, I'm impressed that A, you can keep this up, and B, that you can bring on younger people who can only look at you in awe. I don't know what my question is. I'm just impressed as hell. <laughs> some, someone else wants to ask a question? Yeah, we have some more. Go ahead, Mark. What is the difference between Graham 1 and Graham 2? Graham 2 is our advanced student group. And it's kind of like a farm team. I, th I think over 90% of the company dancers have been part of Gram 2. Uh, Gram 1 is the Martha Graham Dance Company. Um, y y as you can tell, it's a great group, um, more than half of them uh, from outside of the states. And um, sort of reflecting back on the last question, we guarantee our dancers 30 weeks of work a year. And that's about half rehearsal and about half of the time on the road. Yeah, I was first uh, introduced to the Graham Company when I lived in New York in the early 80s, and I was fascinated with the Graham technique, particularly compared to other companies at the time. Um, I remember being at a Q&A similar to this, and Martha was old at the time, and but she did make an appearance, and somebody asked, what makes a great dancer? And I remember her response. She said, great dancers are not great because of technique, they're great because of passion. And of course, technique has to come first. But my question, and, and uh, from Janet or whoever else wants to contribute, my perception over the years is that the Graham technique has changed. It's evolved. It isn't what it was in 1980. Um, am I right? And, and how would you comment on that? Yeah, it's, it, it uh, has evolved from the first early years she created it. And, and fortunately, we saw Martha herself contribute to this evolution. Um, the technique was not created, it's called Martha Graham's vocabulary by some. It wasn't sort of created as a group of exercises and then she started using it to, to make stage works. She had a vision for what she wanted on the stage, started putting it on the stage, and then had to figure out a way to train dancers to do that. So the exercises of our technique have all sort of come from the stage um, they're, they're emotionally based. Um, the Martha Graham physicality is a perfect marriage between uh, the physicality and the emotional description. Um, 
but the evolution has happened not only because as she created new dances, new movements were brought into the classroom, but because as dancers changed, you know, dances like the Olympics, every few years they break another record, the legs go higher, the turns are faster. Martha loved that and would incorporate that into her works on stage as well as into the technique. So, and there's no way to avoid that bodies have changed and physicality has changed and, and the, the technique absorbs all of that. Is this the full Graham company that we're seeing right here? How many are how many are sitting there? Sixteen. <laughs> Sixteen. Sixteen. No, we're traveling. I think with eighteen, and uh, when we're at New York City Center in March, we go up to twenty to complete the number of the various dances that we'll be performing there. We have a um, our, we're a union company, and there's a core group of fifteen that are guaranteed the 30 weeks a year, and then the, the rest of the, the people that work with us are on a weekly contract, and they usually do a good 20, 20 or more weeks. Okay, one more question, the last one. Uh, there was a picture in either today's paper or yesterday's paper that one of the dancers, I don't know which, visited the Indiana School for the Blind. For the Blind, yes. Yes, I was wondering if they might like to share, uh, briefly share their Today, there. It's, would you like to talk about that? Yeah, yeah it was me. Um, I actually had the privilege to work with them. I was very actually curious what I can learn from them because um, I imagined that they had a very heightened um, awareness of other senses. And um, I, as we were preparing for this class or I was preparing for the class, I realized how much I rely my action to be guided through my vision. And I asked myself if I, that will be taken away um, what there is, what, what is, what is there for me to um, draw from? And I realized there's so much that we as dancers kind of take for granted because we do it all the time and um, the senses that we use on stage. But I really wanted to, as, we, as I was teaching the class, learn from the group of um, uh, teenagers to see how they can uh, teach me. Um, as well as um, I teach them. So it was a great experience. I worked with two classes. It was, they were short experiences, um, but it was wonderful to see them. Um, um, you know, these are not dancers, or they see themselves as dancers, um, though I um, refuse to acknowledge that from the beginning, and I call them dancers uh, as they walked in, and I call them dancers as they walked out. Um, and they realized why I called them dancers, because, you know, they're moving. And when you move and breathe, you're a dancer. Um, so it was a great experience all around. Um, but it really, um, it offered me opportunity, personally, to ask myself more questions than I had before. Thank you. Um, so dancers, this, I always love to end with this. I would, as we... Before we leave, I'd like each one of you to tell us a little secret about yourself that nobody knows. And I'll start with me. I'm addicted to potato chips. I love hardcore thrash metal and video games. <laughs> I don't... I, <laughs> yes! I have a horrible habit of biting my nails that I've had since I was five, and I can't break it. <laughs> I'm really good with a sewing machine. <laughs> nails, same thing. I like sweets, which is awful for dancers. I like bad 80s dance attire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jenna, close your ears. <laughs> uh, I enjoy extreme sports. Secret. Uh, I have a picture of Black Lee in Chronicle as my desktop of a computer. <laughs> Ying is my favorite dancer in the Martha Graham Dance Company. I'm trying to think of something that I can actually tell you guys. Um, I can't stand dirt under my fingernails. 
an appropriate secret I have is I love sweets, just like Marsha. I love sweets. <laughs> I used to run track and field. I cannot stand people that talk too much. photographs if I'm like oh. eating stuff. And I'd like to ask Janet what her secret is. Just in the last few weeks, I've become addicted to Instagram. You can find us at Martha Graham Dance. Sign up. So dancers, thank you so much for your time. You've been wonderful. We're going to love them uh, on Friday night in the thank performance. You. Thank you so much for coming. And um, Lynn, is there pizza still for the dancers? There are two pizzas for you out here. No sweets, but pizzas if you want. Pizza. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And next Thursday, we'll have another conversation right here. And it's going to be on the making of Daphnis and Chloe. We'll be with Christoph Urbanski, David Hochoy, and we'll be able to have a backstage tour of Clues. So hope you'll come and join us again next week.